Hey everyone. Um, I'm Erin Knight from the Mozilla Foundation, and um, I lead the Open Badges work um, there. And I am honored to be one of um, one of the instructors for this course, which I'm incredibly excited about. And um, the other the other instructors are Deb Everhart from from Blackboard and Anne Barry Berry from uh, Sage Road Consulting. So you'll be hearing a little bit from each of us um, over the course of the next six weeks. Um, there's also an entire team of, um, of folks that have, have helped on this from Blackboard, Mozilla, WCET, and more. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the Open Badges work and, again, the <clears throat> what open means in that context and, and why it's so important. First, I really wanted to talk about, um, again, what, you know, what are we really talking about today? The, this MOOC is called, you know, is about badges. Um, and certainly we're going to spend a lot of time talking about badges and um, their affordances and, um, and sort of questions and issues around that. But, but really badges is, um, is something that is a solution or is a piece of a solution to a, a broader set of problems. Um, and one of the things that excites me the most about the badges work is the conversation piece, is the, the the discussions that we've been able to have, the people that have come together around the table to um, to really be honest about some of the some of the realities and the problems that we're dealing with, and and really want to dig into um, to real solutions. Um, so when we think about those problems, <clears throat> you know, the first one is really is that um, that education and workforce are changing and have changed. Um, so you know, we think about education. And uh, learning is really not seat time anymore, right? So that um, it is often measured by by seat time and by um, you know sort of outcomes tied to uh, kids literally being in a classroom. Um, but you know the reality is is that in today's world, learning is actually happening in many many different ways, um, in many contexts, um, in, across entire lifetimes. And, and we're we're at this inflection point or this this moment right now where there's actually more learning content probably available um, than ever across the web, um, you know, with MOOCs like this, um, uh, with various open education resources, which Cable will talk about. But we have the opportunities, um, you know, more so than ever. Um, but, but most of that doesn't count for people. So still, the things that count are the things that um, happen kind of behind closed doors or, um, you know, within a within school. Um, and then, you know, on the workforce side, you know, there, there's a bunch of change, obviously, where new technologies um, and, and sort of advancements and economies um, are really dictating new, school, new skills or dictating kind of a constant um, sort of refreshing or upkeep of skills. Um, you know, the, the number of um, jobs that people hold in, in their lifetimes or career changes is, is sort of at an all-time high. Um, and there's really just this kind of expectation that, that people are um, kind of constantly needing to learn and constantly needing to stay on the edge. And there's this kind of feeling of sort of hustling or, or needing to um, sort of keep up with, with all of the change. And again, a lot of those learning um, opportunities are there, but but the, the sort of the frameworks and the systems that we have in place for education and workforce, and certainly those connections between the two, um, don't reflect these new realities. They're really built on systems that um, that uh, are, are much much older and and sort of don't aren't what we're seeing today. And so building on that, you know, there there is this tension between economic mobility and, and innovation. And, you know, we've always, we sort of said, you know, for as long, certainly as long as I remember, but, but um, <clears throat> much, much longer that the, the sort of pathway to success, the pathway to improve your life is, <clears throat> the pathway out of poverty is through education. Um, and uh, in many cases, that in today's world, that's, that's not enough in some cases for people. Um, it's not available to a lot of people. Um, and there are opportunities, um, sort of, you know, sort of outside formal education or in addition to formal education, um, that um, that again don't currently count, but are but are sort of there for the taking. <coughs> Sorry, switching slides. Um, and so, 
you know, in there's uh, in several of their presentations I've done, I when I had a little bit more time, um, I sort of dig into each sector. So looking at K-12, looking at higher ed, looking at um, workforce, et cetera, um, and really digging into sort of the problems that they're that they're dealing with at this point. And it, it comes down to to one, you know, a, a sort of very um, core and common root problem. And really that um, that problem is that um, things are too disconnected. And uh, as we'll talk about in later days in higher ed, certainly, um, you know, the, the sort of learning that happens, you know, is, is relatively siloed and, and um, not transparent um, outside of, of those institutions, you know, workforce. Um, have sort of similar um, sort of similar issues. So um, again, this problem of um, siloed types of learning experiences and not connecting things across organizations or across people's lifetime um, is a is a huge problem. And the reality is, is when we think about the expectations on um, learners, on lifelong learners, on workers, um, there there isn't a single institution out there that can fully prepare them fully prepare them to be, um, you know, sort of ready for uh, these types of changing economies, ready for, um, you know, new technologies, ready to kind of you know, stay on a successful pathway, um, it's actually going to take a lot of different players that are involved. And, and, that has, and that's going to be kind of constant and growing um, throughout people's lifetime. So what the, the kind of, when you look at that core, what we really are talking about here then is that we need a way to connect the learning um, for each individual. And so that means um, you know, taking all of the learning experiences they have and, and pulling those together. That also means connecting that to opportunities, so things like jobs um, or additional learning. Um, but that connection point is, is what's missing and is what's really, really critical. And if we go a step even further below that, um, but can, when we talk about connection, there are sort of real requirements in order to make those connections. And so those requirements are things like, um, you know, communication of the skills that, um, that someone has or, or the learning that, that has happened, um, sort of translation of, of the value of what learning in one um, situation um, means in another situation, um, evidence, you know, again, supporting the, the sort of um, supporting and demonstrating the types of, of things that people have learned. Um, and even things as um, sort of logistical as, you know, somewhere to collect all of that. So um, again, when we, when we stop and think about this kind of as we reflect on, on all of these sort of requirements or, or sort of words, um, it, it really does come down to rethinking credentialing. So the credentials that we have kind of in the market today um, are often abstract um, and represent sort of an idea or an achievement, but, but don't actually capture um, all of the granular learning, so that is lost. Um, they're also you know, highly, highly controlled and, um, and usually only represent kind of you know, formal pathways or, or participation in a particular formal context. Um, and again, they don't, they don't, there is no flexibility then to touch um, the sort of learning outside of that or the, the broader lifelong learning. So we really need to rethink credentials. We need to, we need to have credentials that, um, that capture more. Um, you know, that means both in school, out of school, that means more at the skill level instead of just abstract. Um, and we need those credentials to be something that we can really, um, we can share and we can exchange and um, and really use them to communicate that learning and those skills in a wide variety of contexts, but certainly directly to stakeholders like employers, um, to institutions for sort of credit for prior learning, um, to social networks for reputation, um, those kinds of things. So, so again, we're really boiling down what feels like a insurmountable set of um, diverse problems across all of all of our sectors down into um, some pretty core a pretty core challenge around connecting it all and and this kind of rethinking credentials is one big piece of that. So that's really where open badges um, comes into play. Um, and the idea is again 
um, with Open Badges is reimagining credentials for sort of the digital modern age. So it's probably helpful to take a few minutes to talk about what badges are, since you're going to hear that word um, a lot throughout uh, throughout these six weeks together and beyond, hopefully. Um, so <clears throat> badges really are um, the digital representations of really anything, um, but certainly you know skills, achievements, interests, affiliations. Um, the idea is that you know they are digital records of something about you. Um, obviously, in the work that Mozilla is doing with MacArthur Foundation and Haystack, and certainly um, you know with the conversations on this MOOC, you know we're really focused on badges that represent skills or achievements that um, are job relevant or or sort of can be tied to um, to opportunities for individuals. <coughs> Now, for many of you, um, scouting might be the first thing that comes to mind, and certainly sort of through the blogosphere and across these few years of conversation um, and discussion around badges, scouting comes up um, often. And you know, the, it's, it's definitely worth calling out, because there is a lot here that, um, that we are actually building from. So with scouting, um, the, the badge is actually represented you know, real skills or achievements. You know, you might you you get a badge for um, completing a particular task or um, demonstrating a particular achievement. So they were very sort of granular and skill or competency based. Um, they also unlocked access to um, to additional learning, and in in that way created pathways for learners. So you know, if you if you got one badge today, um, that you often knew what the next badge. Um, that you were that you could achieve or try for um, was and and really start to work on that. Um, there also was a huge reputational component, and you know people literally wore the badges on a sash. Um, and I've actually even met people even today who you know talk talk about um, you know getting all of the Boy Scout badges or um, sort of comparing the badges that they got. So. Um, all of those things, the sort of you know recognizing skills, um, surfacing or or um, demonstrating kind of pathways or leading to additional learning, um, as well as that kind of identity and reputation piece, are all things that we're trying to do here. Those are all design principles or um, you know um, uh, positive outcomes that we want to see with these kind of reimagined credentials. The difference, of course, is that. The um, scouting badges were, you know, physical offline badges. They are literally pieces of fabric that you sewed onto um, onto a, a sash. And and what the opportunity that we have with moving to a digital um, realm or a digital type of medium is that the badges become information based. So it's not just about the picture on the front. It's not just about the name or you know sort of the icon, unless for you to figure out what it means. The badge itself can actually carry the information with it so that you fully understand what that badge represents, what someone had to do to earn that badge, and even what they did, even what that evidence is. So more and more, we're seeing badges um, represent achievements on the web. So another way to say this is we're seeing digital badges being used to represent um, achievements. And some are for more um, kind of fun and social status. So many of you will recognize this as Foursquare, um, which is a game that um, where you kind of check in based on, on where you are and get um, get badges for for um, sort of fun little activities um, in your either local or um, physical location. Um, and so again, it's motivating, it's fun, it tells information, um, it captures information about um, about you and sort of what you're doing and it allows you to share those with other people. But again, you know, we're really talking about this in a in a bigger way. We're talking about we want to sort of leverage these kinds of ideas and use these for something that is more tied to your core identity. It's, it's more about um, the, the sort of skills and um, competencies that you have. Um, and there's examples of these as well. Um, oh, hold on, this just jump back to a later slide for me. Um, so there's examples of these as well. So uh, this slide, if you guys can also see it, it went blank for me, but um, 
is a picture of or a screenshot from a site called Stack Overflow. Um, here, one second, let me just jump to it. Um, which is a question and answer forum um, for technical questions. And so it's been around for a while and it's it's pretty successful. Um, the most people that I know are, are sort of in the the kind of programming, coding, or technical world. Um, if there are questions about specific things, can go to Stack Overflow, um, ask the question, and most likely will get a, um, a sort of high quality, valuable answer uh, very quickly. Um, and so they've got a great community, um, and again, they've got this kind of this um, sense of um, validity and um, and highly value, valuable insight. And so they've had a badge system for a while, and they have badges um, for the things that you would expect, like um, HTML, CSS, various technical languages. If I answer a question about HTML and and that shows that I know something about HTML, um, I I might get awarded that HTML badge. So it's it's you know technically the quote unquote hard skill type of badge that is. Um, you know, tied to a very particular language that I have demonstrated. But then what gets really interesting is that they have this whole other set of badges, and in the picture they're the, um, the sort of darker colored ones, that they made uh, originally just to represent the behaviors that they wanted to encourage within their site. So things like, you know, you edited someone else, you're a good editor, you edit someone else's question, um, you commented on a on a bunch of people's questions. You asked a question that got, you know, viewed or up leveled a hundred times. So it was all about promoting the behaviors that they wanted um, within their community to kind of keep their community um, active and vibrant. But turns out that those badges um, that are more of the kind of social or participation types of badges, in uh, combination with those um, more kind of hard or direct skill badges start to tell this really complete picture about, about these individuals. Um, so much so that employers and institutions were actually willing to pay for, um, for, those, uh, for that information. So um, they actually launched a site called Careers 2.0 um, a few years ago. And the idea is that employers like Google and Yahoo and, and various institutions are actually paying to get that um, that badge and and participation data because of the complete picture that it's that's telling them about um, about their learners. So so there's a lot of power there again in um, in capturing more and in a in a verified way and and allowing people to represent themselves um, fully and comprehensively um, online. <clears throat> so so that's a little bit about. What are badges? Um, and I think it's helpful to just remind ourselves a little bit or talk a little bit about kind of why um, why badges are sort of what we think some of the, the sort of value propositions or possibilities are um, with badges. And again, this is the part that we will come back to again and again over the next few weeks and really dig into specifically with higher ed and uh, workforce in mind. But I think it's helpful just as a top level framing to, to revisit to visit these a few times uh, a little bit before we before we get there. So the first kind of why badges is um, is really about capturing the complete learning path. So this means a lot of things, um, but certainly this means you're kind of capturing more. Um, and I talked a little bit about um, you know currently the only things that really count or get captured are within kind of formal education. So there's a piece of this that, need, that is about capturing more learning outside of formal education. So um, you know, on-the-job training, um, uh, sort of uh, open learning like, like MOOCs, um, some kind of your self-directed types of learning, apprenticeships, all of those types of things uh, we want to be able to capture and pull in as part of that individual story. Um, but it also means capturing kind of more within um, formal education or more within um, each learning experience. So sort of capturing at the more granular skill level um, instead of just some abstract um, kind of degree or um, sort of stamp at the end so that we actually have that, um, that collection or that evidence of, of the entire learning path and the, 
um, and the things that we learned along the way. Um, it also, uh, badges can also really be used to then signal that learning, and again, this word connection, and connect it to opportunities. So, um, you know, they are a visual medium. You can exchange them. You can show people um, that you have this skill or these set of skills. Um, and again, being digital can easily transfer those um, kind of across the web or to various stakeholders to, um, to sort of tell that story um, in a verified way, which we'll talk more about. Um, and then again, the connection point is really um, the, the badges can become the thing that, um, that can help uh, communicate learning across these contexts and, 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 and connect them. So help people find additional learning, um, help people understand um, how learning from one context translates to another. Badges are also, um, thinking back to the scouting example, you know, badges are also, um, can play a big role in reputation and identity. And, um, you know, for those of you that have spent any time in kind of the reputation um, literature out there, there's a lot of talk about how reputation is, is very context specific. Um, but with badges, um, it allows you to at least capture um, that, that reputation and show that, and communicate that that um, that has occurred in various communities, or in some cases actually build it across communities or across, across your lifetime. Um, and the same with identity. It's about, you know, badges actually can give us the opportunity to um, kind of more formally build um, and express our identity online, um, you know, with this kind of skills and achievements um, aspect. So badges can also, um, you know, when we think about them, it's, it's, there's multiple levels. So um, certainly when we talk about them, there's this idea of kind of reinventing um, credentials. And so a lot of the stuff I've been talking about, about, you know, badging informal learning or on-the-job experience is kind of new um, and, and a, a bit of a kind of reinvention of, of how we think about credentials. Um, but then there's also just kind of augmenting the existing credentials that we already have with a more granular representation um, and this more digital format. So make a degree, um, you know, digital or, you know, capture all of that learning that then builds up to a degree so you have that full, um, that full portfolio of what you know. And then finally, um, we can use badges to really start to be explicit about the skills and the competencies that that we or industries care about and, and help people plug in. So just by thinking about things at, in sort of the badging mindset and sort of how we, we would define um, all of these, uh, all of the skills or, or competencies um, or badges, um, we're starting to kind of make these maps or a, ideally a, a, a very big map, but um, certainly within industries or within various organizations, we're starting to kind of surface, again, the, the skills or the competencies that we care about and really allow each learner to kind of see where they fit within that and find opportunities um, to kind of to craft pathways or to, or to find learning um, to kind of get where they need to go. <clears throat> so that's the why badges. Um, now we'll talk about how badges. Um, so when we talk about how badges, um, this is really where the the kind of Mozilla um, the Mozilla mindset certainly comes in, and, and definitely the Mozilla technology. But really, where that question of openness starts to starts to really come in. Um, and so, when we talk about badges, you know, we we learned very very early on that. Um, that if, if, we, if we set out to do badges in a way where each organization built badges on their own um, and within their own sort of walls and all of those badge systems were siloed, um, there still might be some value within each one of those for learners and some motivation, et cetera. But, but we weren't solving that, those kind of that core problem of, of that kind of, of the connecting learning and, um, uh, and working at this ecosystem level. So, um, so we really started thinking very, very early on about badges at an ecosystem level and what that would mean as a shared ecosystem level. And so it's not just about digital badges, but it's about open badges. And I'll dig in more about what this means, but really the idea, at least the driving kind of idea behind all of this is that we want each individual learner 
to be able to learn um, across lots of different organizations like they probably already are um, and get badges to represent that learning and pull all of that together into a collection that they manage and that they collect and that they um, can decide how to share out. Um, and then, yeah, the, carve them up as needed with various stakeholders. So there might be a different set with social networking or, or personal websites or job sites. Um, and, the, and then that ultimately leads to, to real results like jobs. Um, so that sounds pretty easy to do. Or it sounds, you know, on paper, might seem kind of logical. But it's, it's quite difficult to actually do at this level because what we're talking about is kind of orchestration or coordination across, you know, ultimately, you know, mil many, 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 many um, learning experiences um, and, and have it needing some way that that learner can actually then um, kind of pull all of that together. So Mozilla has done a little bit of work here um, on uh, a couple pieces. Um, one is some free and open source software um, that allows learners to actually pull those badges together. Um, it's called Badge Backpacks. But most importantly, um, we've defined what's called the Open Badges Standard. And so the standard is really just um, a definition of the information that every badge needs to include. Um, so uh, things like who the issuer is, who the recipient is, what the criteria is for that badge, so what someone would have to do to earn it, um, and then um, what the evidence is, so you know what the what the learner actually produced, whether it be a blog post or an essay, um, and then things like does this align with standards? Um, you know, sort of what are the tags or taxonomies? Um, so again, it's about making sure that each badge has enough information in it so that wherever it's shared across the ecosystem, um, uh, the person on the other side, whether it's an employer or a, um, a college or what have you, can actually has the information to understand that badge. So what Mozilla has done is basically define the minimal set of information that must be in each one of those badges. And, that, and every badge that then aligns with the standard or includes this information then become interoperable within this ecosystem uh, and can be stacked and shared and collected um, as well as used across various tools and platforms. <clears throat> so again, Open Badges Standard includes um, uh, a bunch of information, this is some of it, that allows us to both authenticate the badge um, as well as provide information around the assessment. So um, this, these numbers are actually fairly outdated at this point, but just to give you a snapshot of kind of how many people are using badges, um, the numbers today are actually, I think there's about 1,400 issuers and uh, close to 200,000 badges at this point. Um, and so we launched the standard formally in March. Um, and so, so the momentum is is quite considerable, um, and there's you know we're getting to a point where there's a lot of badges um, kind of in that ecosystem. Um, but it's important to remember or to remind ourselves that um, that the stuff that Mozilla is talking about um, building or that we're sort of on the hook for is um, is actually quite minimal. And this diagram sort of shows it in the middle, and it really should be kind of underneath um, and very small. <laughs> because the most important pieces of this diagram are the things in the big blue boxes. And the issuers you know, are the teaching and learning providers, um, and they are the ones that um, you know, really are providing those learning experiences. And without those learning experiences and assessments, the badges would not mean anything. So, so that is um, obviously a really critical part of all of this, um, as well as on the other side, the sort of displayers or the, the kind of consumers or users of badges, like who are the people that are going to actually um, use that badge in the hiring um, decision or, um, or sort of admissions decision. Um, so quickly, how do we know badges are worth something? Again, this question is going to come up a lot, and we're going to come back to this a lot, so I don't want to spend too much time on it today. Um, but I just want to say that, um, that there is a bunch of thinking that kind of is built into badges um, that I think we'll sort of build on um, as we go. One is that, again, badges are information-based, and so we can actually um, you know, store much more information with them than, um, than we can with current credentials um, and, uh, and use that um, to better understand them. Um, there's also uh, some features kind of within the, the Open Badges um, ecosystem around endorsement which allows third-party organizations to actually um, sort of put their endorsement and put their 
um, you know, sort of checkbox or OK um, on each badge, which then becomes additional information uh, with that badge. And then finally, how badges are used and accepted. If, if a particular badge has been used in hiring situations, um, that's going to add a lot of value to that badge. So there's a bunch of feedback that, um, that's going to happen as, um, as badges are um, being used that, um, that is going to really start to add some of that, that validation information. So I want to get to um, cable, but very quickly, um, as a quick summary, it's just that education and workforce are changing. Um, and we really are falling behind because we are the systems that we have in place are built for um, kind of older views of education and workforce. And the, the opportunities are often there. It's just that we need a better way to really connect that um, for learners. And so open badges are the digital or our digital credentials for this modern age, for these realities. They're evidence-based and verified. They contain information that sort of can help validate and verify them. Um, and they really can demonstrate or communicate skills and achievements um, and be collected or stacked across lifetimes so that you have a full portfolio of what you know and what you can do. And then they're shareable across the web for things like jobs. But again, I want to stress the importance of we're not just talking about digital badges, we're talking about open badges. So again, we want badges um, to be interoperable. We want them to work across all learning experiences. We want them to be accessible to as many people as possible and transferable and understandable across the web. We want a true ecosystem. So the critical thing there is understanding what this openness means and, and sort of protecting it and, and promoting it within our own work. <clears throat> 